It's about 7.45. Thanks for staying with us. Paddle boarding has quickly become a hit here in the Cayman Islands on the water sports scene, but your form can have a big impact on how well you paddle. On this Staying a Step Ahead, we get advice on getting into just the right position. Good morning and Happy New Year. I'm Christine Gibbs from A Step Ed Physiotherapy in Governor's Square. Thank you for joining me for another segment of Staying a Step Ahead. Paddleboarding is quickly becoming an obsession for many people here in Cayman. Unfortunately, that means a whole new set of overuse injuries. I am now seeing patients with pain from paddleboarding. The most common injury I see is shoulder pain. However, people are also coming in for back, ankle, wrist, and also elbow pain. Here with me today is Deanna Smith from Cayman Sound Up Paddleboard Company. I have worked with Deanna as a fitness instructor for years as I really respect her philosophy on fitness and training. She has recently begun teaching paddleboard lessons. We were chatting a few weeks ago about the injuries I've been seeing in the clinic and she agreed there are definitely some sports specific injuries affiliated with paddleboarding. Since I am very new to the sport, in fact I've only been on a paddleboard <laughs> once, I asked Deanna if she would come demonstrate proper technique and give us some tips on how to prevent overuse injuries. So Deanna, tell us a little bit about paddleboarding. Well, stand-up paddleboarding, or SUP, is one of the fastest growing activities in the world. It is a great way to get active, have fun, and enjoy the beautiful outdoors of Cayman. You can also incorporate things like resistance bands, you can do Pilates, you can do yoga on the board to really get an amazing workout. Like I said, I've only tried paddleboarding once. It's definitely not as easy as I thought <laughs> it was going to be. It requires a lot of balance and focus. I was surprised at how much I had to concentrate. I found it quite challenging both mentally and physically. And keep in mind that we did go out on a windy day, which makes the sea a little bit more rough than usual, which requires more balance. Um, since it was your first time out as well, it is completely understandable that you had to concentrate so much. It does get easier over time the more you, you do paddleboard. But you are right, at first glance, paddleboarding does seem very straightforward. However, learning the proper paddleboard stroke is essential and it does take time. A SUP is an activity that involves repetitive muscle and joint movements for extended periods of time. This can put people at risk for overuse injuries. Mm. So when executed correctly, the proper stroke technique will have you utilizing large muscles of your back, your torso, as well as your legs for power, stability, and core strength. SUP is a unique and amazing workout like no other I've ever found. I think that might be why I'm starting to see back issues from paddleboarding. Many people don't have a well-developed core. The demands of paddleboard stroke may be challenging those muscles a little bit too much. If the paddle stroke is done incorrectly, you can quickly develop overuse injuries in your shoulders, your spine, your elbows, as well as your back. Another key player in minimizing overuse injuries is the paddle. Choosing a paddle that is the correct size for you is very, very important. If the paddle is too long, you end up extending your arm way too high and start generating force with your arm overstretched which can put some serious strain on your shoulder joint over time. That makes sense, but how do you know the proper paddle length? A good rule of thumb, you've got the paddle beside you. I want you to reach your left arm up. Mm -hmm. Okay, the paddle's quite close to you. A good rule of thumb, the top of the paddle handle doesn't come any higher than your wrist. If it's up above the fingers, it's too high. Okay. Last month on my segment, mm -hmm. I emphasized the importance of warming up before any sort of workout. What do you recommend for paddle boarding warming up? Uh, do you mind if I demonstrate a couple? Absolutely. It's kind of fun to do it with the paddle. I recommend getting a little bit of a back warm up, a little bit of shoulders, a mm -hmm. little bit of legs. So I always start with a nice reach up and then I roll forward, get that nice stretch in the back and the hamstrings and then I roll up. I'm always just gently bringing the paddle behind, keeping my back straight just to start warming up the chest and the shoulders a little bit. Okay. Another one really good one to do is a nice side bend because you're doing a lot of bending and twisting when you're paddle boarding. So you get that nice side bend, nice gentle twist, letting your hips move when you twist. And another one of my favorite one, which helps mimic the actual paddle stroke, you're using the paddle just gently in the sand and you're actually twisting and you're feeling that really nice stretch in the lower back and the hips. And that's actually part of the paddle stroke itself. So it's quite, quite useful that way. Now, before we get in, I don't want shoulder injuries, so can you demonstrate a proper stroke so I don't get, wind up yep. with any issues? No problem. I'm just gonna stand up on this BOSU ball, kind of simulates the water a little bit and gives me a little bit of height. Okay, when you're standing on the, on the board, you want a little bit of a knee bend, okay? Both arms are gonna be straight, okay? And you're gonna reach forward with the hips, trying to stack your shoulders, okay? 
the blade is going to go into the water, almost slice into the water, and this is where you want to avoid bending your arms. You keep your arms straight and you rotate, right? So you reach, squeeze those abs and rotate as opposed to doing So it's more trunk that. than arms. Yeah, the arms okay. are just an extension of your body in the paddle. Now that you've shown us what we should be doing, let's see if I can put it into practice. But let me clarify, this is only my second time out. So watch Deanna, and she'll show you how, and me for a good laugh. Okay, hold on a second. One more thing, falling in. Hey, okay. I didn't fall in last time. Well, face it, everyone falls in sooner or later. I fall in. True. What you want to do is make sure you fall in safely. Okay, so you're going in the water, you're going to get wet anyway. Jump away from the board. Don't try to grab the board on the way down, just so you know you get a nice clearance away and you're, you're good to go and to head back up. Sounds good. Let's go. All right. So when you're standing on the paddle boards, you want to stand in the middle of the paddle board with your feet shoulder width apart. And the middle of most boards is where the handle is. Okay, so you're standing with your feet apart, knees slightly bent. Okay, when you're actually going through the stroke, you want to try and stack your shoulders and keep your arms straight. Those are two of the biggest things you want to think about, right? And you're actually rotating when you paddle, right? So you're holding the paddle, you're reaching forward, the blade slices in the water, and then you're almost uncoiling and twisting as you pull yourself forward. As Deanna and I have discussed and demonstrated today, paddleboarding is a great activity. It not only challenges your entire body and helps build core strength and balance, it's a great way to have fun and release stress. And let's face it, who doesn't need a little stress <laughs> relief in their lives? If today's segment left you eager to try paddleboarding, or you are experiencing paddleboard related pain, please contact me at the clinic and we'll get you on the water pain and injury free in no time. Thanks to Deanna, and thanks for tuning in. Join me next month to continue staying a step ahead. Hope to see you on the water soon. If you'd like to get in contact with Christine or the team at A Step Ahead Physiotherapy, you can give them a call at 745-ASAP, that's 745-2727, or send an email to info at astepaheadphysio.com. You can also visit their website, that's www.astepaheadphysio.com, or you can give them a visit at their offices located at Governor Square.